Good morning, traders. It's Thursday, May 14th. Taking a look at the charts, we got the SP500, and really, it's been a pretty kind of slow uh, few weeks here as the market's kind of pushed up to these resistance levels. And of course, we talked about these many times. We've got this retracement level. And if we bring it down here, we're looking at that 618 retracement level. Whoop which is right here, this green line. This is what we've, we've seen in the past. When the market has a big crash, it usually has a bounce up to the 618 or the 1.5%. Um, the SP500 is kind of in the, in the middle of the range. If we were to actually go look at the Russell 2000, let's just see where that one is on a retracement from these highs. Of course, it's underperforming dramatically. Oh, it almost squeezed up to that 618, but really popped above the, the 0.5, which is a very key level. Um, usually when something stalls at the 5 or even at the 3.8, that means it has a lot more uh, downward biased. If the higher it goes up, if it goes up to the 618, it actually has a, a little bit more of a, a positive bias because it's really pushed beyond the halfway point and, uh, and could actually have more momentum to go forward. But when something stalls out around that 50% move, and even when it stalls at that 38, it actually has more power to really continue to go down to the downside because there's just not enough upward movement. And that's what we're seeing with the small caps. It popped above the 50%, dropped real quick, tagged it again the, uh, last week. It's falling again, and it's forming that. Uh, it's starting to break down from this little head and shoulders formation that I've, I've talked about uh, over the last little while, this little kind of uh, move here. We talked about having a potential little pop and a hook and how the market loves to squeeze the market, squeeze everyone who's short out, and then go in the opposite direction. For short-term traders, long-term traders uh, are sucked in uh, thinking that this is still a nice strong uptrend, more or less, and um, they're going to be holding through this. They don't see a topping formation. They just see this as a rally, a pullback, a rally, a pullback, and they think this is going up for another rally and another pullback, but that's not what the market internals and all of our other analysis was saying. Our other analysis has been, this is a bear flag. And of course, we've got that break to the downside. It's picking up speed today. And let's just actually take a quick look and see where those targets are, the Fibonacci extension. So we got the high, we got this low, and then we go up to this high and carry it forward. I'm just going to get rid of this other one so it doesn't get confusing. So today we are on the verge of hitting the 100% measured move. Now, yesterday it came all the way down and had a pretty wide range between the low and the high, so it definitely found some support. Usually you find some support at 618. 618 tends to be a previous low, and if the trend is up, it'll be a previous high, just the way the markets move and, and fractal kind of movements. Uh, more or less a big range, indicating it sold off, it had a big bounce, and then it kind of neutralized. So it did have more or less an intraday pause and, and hiccup at the 618, and here we are today continuing on to this downward uh, downward target, 100% measured move. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is hit today. Looking at the overseas charts on Finviz, all the other indexes uh, overseas are down over 2%. The stock market right now in the U.S. is only down um, uh, 1% to only 8 tenths of a percent. So there's still a lot more room for the U.S. markets to, to fall and catch up with what happened overseas. And that's probably what's going to happen today, which means Russell 2000 is going to tag this 100% measured move. And really, if you, you look at just the size of this move, you've got to move down for three days. These, these were pretty big days. And then you have the bear flag, which usually drags out a little longer. And then we're down for more or less three or four days. So this, this pattern-wise, time frame-wise, between its kind of cycles is uh, kind of playing out. This, this move looks really like it's, it's unfolding. We've now broken this neckline. It's down to the downside. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see a bounce. And um, we're looking for a new entry signal in the market. It's starting to break down. The technicals are on the verge of breaking down. Actually, let's take a look at the market internals and our our gauge information here. Now, if you take a look, this is the 30-minute chart of the SP500. This is zoomed back uh, into July of last year. So you can see the big rally up, the parabolic run into early this year. And then, of course, the February-March crash. Um, now, overall, this is the market internals. This is what intermarket analysis and cycles are also showing as well. They're two different strategies. Using One's using more technical. One's using, actually, uh, internals and intermarket analysis. And we're starting to get into these orange bars, which indicate a warning that we're very close to reversing to the downside. We've got a really uh, significant uh, uh, support level down around this area, which goes right through here, that... Uh, 
the sentiment is shifting dramatically into big money is flowing into the safe havens. Um, the average Joe trader is still piling into stocks. Um, that is uh, the sign that the market is most likely rolling over here. Now, if we were to zoom in on our shorter term analysis and just look at, uh, I'll just zoom into this chart a little bit more. If we look at the SP 500 and zoom in going back a little bit of time, we get these lime green areas, which we got yesterday as well. Uh, market internals are starting to show signs of weakness, just like we saw over here. Um, this time around, it looks like we've got more momentum. This year was a, a quick hiccup in terms of the price action, and then it took off. But because we've hit that 618 retracement level on the market, it's put in this kind of head and shoulders formation on the 30-minute chart. It's It started to break this neckline yesterday. It is oversold. It is primed for a bounce, but we are going to see it gap lower today. It's going to be an exhaustion gap down. Gaps tend to get filled. So with any luck, we're actually going to see the market gap down, and it's actually going to recover and, and work its way up. And we might actually get a sell signal today or tomorrow, uh, potentially to get into a sector uh, and play the downside with an inter inverse ETF or actually get long bonds. So that's kind of we're in this kind of turning phase in the market, very close to it rolling over. And if I was to just uh, zoom back a little bit more and you look at let's just. Take a look. This is the SP 500 before the market rolled over. You get into this deep oversold territory and then uh, the market really just the bottom kind of it just kept collapsing. But this lime green area and this type of sell off below the 20 day and, and sentiment and, and intermarket analysis all kind of screaming to us on the other chart that, hey, things are actually corroding and, and getting worse. The underlying assets, um, it's not really a buy opportunity, even though it's oversold. We're getting that same type of setup. Uh, going over here, it's getting very close. We actually might start to see red bars, just like we saw over here, which indicate um, things are bad. Big money is moving out of the market, and uh, you need to move to a safe haven or, or inverse play. So that's where we're at. We're at one of these big turning points. We might see red on the chart down here today, which indicates, um, again, total weakness. And uh, we, we probably want to get into an inverse type of play. All right, let's jump over to bonds real quick. Obviously, money's flowing out of stocks. Stocks down 1% this morning. Money's got to go somewhere. It is going into the safe havens, which are bonds. We're seeing bonds up uh, six-tenths of a percent. They've been flagging out here for a while. Big patterns in, in bonds are very similar to that of gold, which is you see a rally, a consolidation, a rally, a consolidation, a rally, consolidation. Obviously, this is a continuation pattern, so the odds are pointing to another rally. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this type of price action. This, to me, is really extreme, and maybe we only have enough upside to get back to these highs. This seems like some capitulation blow-off top in bonds, but we're not going to uh, get too concerned about that. Uh, I do think if we're starting a bear market, we actually don't really want to go into bonds, which we actually want to play inverse on some of the weaker sectors um, financials, maybe small caps even, or, or different sectors that are really going to crumble and erode. Um, let's just take a look over the Jets ETF. This is the airlines. I haven't looked at it in a week or two, but uh, the airline industry, look at the volume pour in. Everyone has been getting out of the airlines. I think it was UAL. UAL uh, was at 95 and now it's at uh, $20. It's on the verge of breaking those lows. These companies are going to go, they're going to go bankrupt, but they're going to get bailed out. But they're still going to go to almost worthless, I think, before um, they actually get bought out and get resolved and all that stuff. So I think there's a lot of downside. And the Jet CTF gives you the basket of the airlines. And it's on the verge of breaking down. And if you look at how this is traded sideways, it's underperformed dramatically. Just look at the difference. So you've got jets were really bad. The, uh, the actually we'll go to small caps here. The small caps had a, a bit bigger of a bounce. And then you go to the SP 500. It's had a, a larger bounce up to the 618. And then as you get to the NASDAQ, where it's tech heavy with some of the leaders in it, it's had a much stronger bounce and recovery. Fell 40%, bounced 40%. Um, 
but it just goes to show and you don't I don't think in my opinion we, we want to look to get short the big brand names because the big tech companies are going to have support every time they sell down to these key levels there's going to be funds there's going to be investors and traders saying oh this is a killer buy and so they're going to be supporting and buying up the big brand name companies you want to get into I think the dogs like potentially the jets or, or even financials everything that's crumbling and that's underperforming if you take a look at the XLF the financials it's really underperformed. It's had a stall, a really stalled out bounce, put in a double top, started to break down uh, yesterday. And these ones, I think, have more potential downside than buying a leading brand name stock that you may think is overvalued or you might just like. You don't really want to short something that is uh, outperforming. You want to short something or buy an inverse ETF for something that is uh, underperforming because it's really going to underperform when uh, when the selling starts. There already are no buyers to drive the price up. So when a wave of next wave of buy or selling hits, there isn't anyone to soak up those shares and you're going to see a really big collapse. All right, let's go over to gold real quick. It's the other safe haven, up another half percent this morning. It's really stalling out here and, and holding its ground in this pattern. Um, it has, it's primed and ready for a strong move. Take a look at this. We got the lows, we got the high, we got this low. If we squish the price down, you can see where it could potentially go, which is the 1990, $2,000 mark. If, if gold can get traction, it, it doesn't quite feel like it's gonna get there, but I mean, I think we could push up to this 1866. Potentially, we get all the way up to that 2000 mark. I, th I think that'll actually catch a lot of people off guard because it's really stalled out. Um, it seems like a lot of people really aren't that interested in gold. Everybody is interested in the miners, and I get it. There's a lot more potential on the profit side. But if the stock market collapses, we could very easily see the miners pull back or go sideways while gold goes higher. Um, and that's the reason why we're in it. But I, I like gold here. It's primed and ready for $2,000 an ounce and to push to all-time highs. So it's uh, pretty interesting on how things are unfolding. And we're in that position. It really just needs to have a breakaway day and grab some attention and, and really start to run. We're going to have a couple levels of resistance. This high here, this high across here. We got another high right here, which I like it when they're layered over each other like this because as you break one, it creates... Uh, a wave of buy orders that can sometimes run it to hit the second one and create even more buy orders and then hit the third one. You can have a huge, big up day in the markets or, or one or two big up days that runs the stops of anyone who's short. And then a lot of those people will actually flip their positions and go long. So it creates like a triple buying pressure and you get these big moves to the upside, a breakaway, and then we could potentially see it pick up speed and, uh, and rock it up there. So that's what we're looking for. And hoping, hoping that will unfold and it's not manipulated and held down um, like so many people think. And it could be. But um, really, the pattern is there. It's, and the market's primed and ready for that. Looking over at energies, natural gas up uh, six-tenths of a percent. It's really stalling out here. I'm not a huge fan of what's going on with the price action. Um, if we look over at our short-term analysis chart, um, we had our buy signal over here. We got in. We got out. We got in on this day over here. It rallied up. We got long. We got out on a cycle high in an island, a big gap up above res into resistance, above our resistance area, and then it crashed. This is exactly why you need to have stops in place. We're back down to a double bottom here. Maybe it's going to bounce. It is oversold and, and overdone, but um, at this point, the technicals have really gone negative, and um, it could just continue to break down and collapse from here. But um, if you didn't get out up here and take your money off the table, uh, maybe you got out the next day or two when uh, it came back down to our entry price for a break-even stop. If, you, if you're not um, following the rules, now you're underwater and you're losing a lot of money. Um, trading is all about uh, planning the trade, finding the setup, and then trading the plan. When you hit a level, get out, move your stop up, protect your money. And then if you get stopped out on the rest of it, who cares? Actually, it's a good thing. It means you're following rules. If you're still holding UNG, you have problems. And that's not a good thing. You can't just buy and hold and hope and, and think it's going higher. I mean, we have been talking about uh, natural gas potentially having a huge run. I mean, we're talking, we could see a huge run up here. But that's not the case. That That's just forecasting prediction. That's just what could happen on the charts big term, long term. It doesn't mean you just buy and you hold and wait for it to get there. And a lot of people do that with gold miners and gold. And you have to trade it. This is why we got out of GDXJ on the high point of the year on the open up here. 
And if you didn't get out up here, you went down 57%. And a lot of people did that. So you're not alone if that's you. You just need to realize it's not about liking something and wanting and, and thinking it's just up from there and you're going to hold it. I mean, if you hold it long enough, sometimes it'll come back. But, I mean, it's just not the way trading works. There's no point in riding this roller coaster. Uh, we caught this move. We got out. We played a big spike in bonds. We got out. And, you know, we played the SPY. We got in, got out. Um, we're in gold and, and then net UNG. I mean, we're playing all these. You have to get in and you have to get out. If you don't take money off the table, you're going to eventually just lose money because that's the way the markets tend to work. Eventually, all winners will turn into losers if you hold on to them long enough um, in, in the grand scheme of things. As a, as a swing trader, long-term investing, you've got some buffer, but you got to ride that roller coaster. Uh, let's look at crude oil here. Two and a quarter percent to the upside. I'm not too excited about crude. We haven't traded it in a long time. Um, it's got this range. It's got this range. It's uh, It's got this lower range right down here as well. Uh, more or less, it's stuck in here between these floors and ceilings. It's kind of drifting in no man's land. Obviously, um, 28 is a level. 36 is a level. If it comes back down to 2021, 20, that'll be a support level. But not like in this pattern. I think at any point here, we could. It's it's got this kind of rising, um, this little kind of bear flag coming up for what could be a little bit of a double top. And at any point, we could see it slam. Uh, big red bar to the downside. This is not my favorite type of pattern formation. Um, anyways, that's it for this morning. Video dragged out a little long, but uh, I think there's a lot of good info in there today. Anyways, take care. Bye-bye.